Hey, look, another IEM for us to review. Yep, we're back into the wide and expanding world of IEMs. This time, we take a look at the Tanjim Ola. This product costs $40. The folks at Shenzhen Audio sent me the Ola to review. Shenzhen Audio is among a handful of online retailers that specializes in chi-fi gear. They've got good customer service, competitive pricing, and a huge host of typical and atypical gear. Take a look at Shenzhen Audio if you're interested. The Ola is the first product I've heard from Tangem. Let's see how it stacks up. Tangem says that the Ola is fully designed in-house, including the drivers. They say that the Ola will present, quote, clear sound with a wide dynamic range. Interestingly, Tangem says that this IEM is dustproof and waterproof due to a special filter attached to the nozzles. Tangem says that the Ola is designed to follow the HRTF transfer function curve. This, they say, will bring, quote, clear imaging and hierarchical details ensuring the clear and realistic sound effects, percussion, and footsteps during gaming, end quote. Tangent provides a frequency response curve. They say that the Ola has, quote, flat bass response and an overall balanced sound signature. The marketing here has a healthy dose of mumbo-jumbo and a slight sprinkling of concrete descriptions. At least Tangent did not mention fairies. The Ola, despite its $40 price tag, is a surprisingly well-built product. The casing is aluminum. It is stiff, seems rugged, and smooth to the touch. But truth be told, after the Tin Hi-Fi T2, we kind of expect IEMs to have good build, and thankfully the Ola succeeds in that respect. However, while the casing is aluminum, the nozzles are plastic. They seem to be securely attached, and pulling on them repeatedly has not caused them to loosen. The Ola comes with a detachable two-pin cable. The cable is covered with PVC material and seems to be strong. Tangem is proud of this cable and mentions it a few times in the marketing. You can order the Ola with a built-in microphone if you wish. The Ola comes with six pairs of silicone ear tips and a carrying pouch. The ear tips seem well-built and are substantially better than the crap ear tips Blonde throws into their boxes. As for comfort, I found the Ola to be reasonably comfortable. The ear tips I used did not seem to cause long-term discomfort. The Ola is not contoured, so it does not sit nestled into my ear cavity. However, it never came loose even with vigorous head shaking. I could wear the Ola for about two and a half hours before needing a break. Overall, the Ola has good build, decent accessories, and a comfortable fit. IEMs that cost hundreds of dollars are not quite as well constructed as this. I'm sure some people will not find the Ola comfortable, but I thought it was easy enough to wear for a few hours at a time. To test the Ola, I paired it with numerous devices. This includes my RME ADI2 DAC, my Modi and Liquid Spark stack, the Low 2 Paw S1, and the Low 2 Paw 6000. I listened to my test playlist on Amazon Music HD and Kobus and used the stock accessories. The Ola is very easy to drive. You do not need a dedicated amplifier. Plug it directly into your headphone jack if you want. Tangem says that the Ola has a flat bass response. My tests indicate that the Ola has a marginal sub bass roll off. In Mountains by Hans Zimmer, there is a rumble from the beginning which builds into a crescendo. The Ola presented this detail, but it was quieter than on the more neutral Moondrop Quarks. Transients was a little faster on the Ola than on the Quarks. When the crescendo hit, the Ola made the organ meld with the other instruments. The rolling thunder effect was audible, but did not drown out the other elements. When the vocals chimed in, they rose in the background until they were shoulder to shoulder with the instruments. In Conquer by Overwork, there's a rolling marble sound at the beginning. This pans from right to left to center. The Ola presented this sound and the panning. There are multiple drums in this track and the Ola rendered them all similarly. In other words, the various drums all had hard impact and each drum strike melded with the next. I listened to several hip-hop songs including Pure Water, New Patek, Reel It In, and Uproar. On each occasion, the Ola presented the sub bass, but the transience was faster than what I heard on the quarks. The subwoofer always sounded like it was at the other end of a medium-sized room. The vocals were two steps ahead of the instruments and retained their sparkle. The drums were louder than the sub-bass. I listened to my Sicaria playlist. I used these songs to determine if there is any audible bass distortion. Traversing from low to high volumes, I could not hear any distortion. Overall, the Ola appears to have a marginal sub-bass roll-off. I suspect a bit of EQ might help if you want a more full rendition. Mid-bass seems to be close to neutral. My tests indicate that the mids are forward, but not sibilant. 
In Orla Gartland's song, Why Am I Like This, there is natural vocal grain and cymbals mixed into the track. The Ola presented both details and emphasized neither. The Ola Siblings rendition was similar to what I heard on the Quarks. Orla's voice was two steps ahead of the instruments. The Quarks, in comparison, presented Orla's voice about one step ahead of instruments. There was some melding among all the instruments, but no muddiness on the Ola. In Watch It Back by Haim, the Ola again showed that it does not emphasize vocal siblings. This was similar to what I heard on the Quarks. At 8 seconds into the track, the primary singer says the word we and drags it out, making it sound gravelly. The Ola rendered this detail. There are two backup vocalists, one in either channel. The Ola initially presented all three vocalists clearly with their individual tonalities. When the instruments played at maximum, the backup vocalists melded into one voice. The drums, bass, guitar, and piano all melded. The vocals remained one to two steps ahead of the other elements. In Superposition by Young the Giant, the Ola presented the ukulele, drums, and bass. All instruments melded their notes together slightly. The primary male vocalist was about two steps ahead of the instruments. His vocal siblings did not appear to be emphasized. There's a backup vocalist whose voice is layered beneath the primaries. Most IEMs and headphones cannot reveal this subtle detail. The Ola could not either. Between 1 minute and 10 and 1 minute and 20 seconds, there are sharp intakes of breaths. The Ola presented this detail. Overall, the Ola seems to have forward mids with particular attention to vocals. However, there's no emphasis of sibilance. There's no better than average clarity in this region either. My tests indicate that the Ola has fairly neutral treble with perhaps a slight roll off in the upper treble region. In Skirts Over X Wings, the Ola presented the brass and horns clearly. Their nasally signatures were easily audible. However, the higher pitch notes seemed a little bit recessed, and less loud than what I heard on the more neutral corks. This difference was not significant, but somewhat noticeable in an A-B test. The timpani was audible, but did not drown out the other instruments. The ola has some width, but no depth or verticality. In other words, some instruments seemed further out into the wings, but none sounded like they were deeper into the room and no sounds came from above or below. In Flight from the City, the Ola made the piano sound like it was about 5 feet away. Its bassy notes were slightly underemphasized. The cello was as loud as the piano and sounded, uh, for the lack of better terminology, smooth. Both instruments melded their tonalities. I heard the pops and sizzles, electric buzzing effects, creaking of wood on the pianist's bench, and the shifting of the cello's weight. In Take 5 of the De Brubeck Quartet, the Ola rendered the piano in the right, drums in the left, saxophone center, and the bass one step behind. All instruments melded their tonalities, but none seemed veiled in the mix. The saxophone was the loudest, most obvious element in the mix. The saxophone's higher pitch notes seemed a little bit quieter than what I heard on the quarks. The cymbals are struck at different positions, which should result in varying tonalities. The ola made each cymbal strike sound the same. Overall, the Ola seems to have very close to neutral treble. There might be a slight upper treble reduction, but it's not significant. There's no harshness in the treble region, even at high volumes. Tanja makes some interesting claims about the detail retrieval. Remember, they say that the Ola will provide, quote, higher archical details, ensuring the clear and realistic sound effects, percussion, and footsteps during gaming. Throughout my time with the Ola, I never felt that I was getting greater detail retrieval than what I've heard on many other IEMs, nor did the Ola suddenly open my music to slight variances that I had not previously noticed. In fact, my experience with the Ola was pretty run-of-the-mill, or average. Creaking of wood, shifting of a cello's weight, sharp and takes of breath, multiple vocalists, twangs of guitar strings, nasally signatures of brass and horns, these types of details are clear. But subtle, nuanced details are not any clearer on the Ola than on far cheaper IEMs like the Quarks. For a more quantitative test, I use the song New Light by Kazuki. This track has layers of details, including the sound of children playing, wind, rustling of grass, synth, piano, and footsteps. I count the number of footsteps I can hear in the first 60 seconds. The WGT2 presents 9 to 10 footsteps. The Heidi's MS2 8 to 9. The Tin Hi-Fi T2 and T2 Evo present 7 to 8 footsteps. The Moondrop Aria presents 7. The T2 Plus, Blonde BL05, and the The Audio Legacy 2 present 6 to 7. The Moondrop Starfield presents 6 footsteps. The Moondrop Corks, Blonde BL03, and Triple Wind Melee each present 5 to 6 footsteps. The Ola rendered 6 to 7 footsteps. For my detail resolution scale, I use the Moondrop Aria and Starfield as the 
average performers. Any IEM that provides more or less footsteps is judged accordingly. Thus, on my scale, the BL03 would be considered below average and the Tin Hi-Fi T2 would be above average. Using this standard, it seems clear to me that the Ola has average detail retrieval. Of course, changing ear tips or insertion depth and your own music will render different results. Tangem says nothing about the Ola's soundstage ability. My test suggests this IEM has slightly above average soundstage. However, the Ola does not present a 3D experience. While you might hear some width, the Ola does not excel at depth or verticality. Of course, the original recording has a lot to do with this as well. Just as with the detail resolution test, I also have a scale for soundstage. For me, this involves, yet again, using the Moondrop Aria and Starfield as the average performers. Anything that has greater or lesser soundstage is judged accordingly. The Tina Hi-Fi T2 and Heidi's MS2 have above average soundstage. The Blonde BL03 and the ZR5S are average at best and perhaps slightly below average in soundstage based on proper fit. The Starfield, Aria, and Quarks are average. I would place the Ola as slightly wider than the Moondrop Aria. However, it appeared to me that the Tin Hi-Fi T2 was wider than the Ola. I'm not sure what Tangent was aiming at when they came up with the Ola. Their marketing isn't particularly insightful. On the one hand, they claim that the Ola is flat, but also put emphasis on the Ola's analytical abilities. My experience with the Ola left me with one fairly consistent impression. The Ola seems to have a vocal-centric sound with neutral characteristics throughout. This is not remotely an analytical or bassy IEM. The Ola sub-bass is rolled off, marginally. You might not notice it, or it might not bother you. Regardless, I'm pretty sure a slight EQ adjustment will take care of any shortcomings in this regard. Mid-bass seems to be close to neutral. The Ola's mids are forward, but surprisingly not sibilant or harsh. Vocals stand apart from instruments. They are pushed ahead of other elements in a mix and therefore the central focus of a track. The treble is fairly close to neutral with perhaps a slight downward deviation in the upper treble area. The Ola has average detail retrieval and perhaps slightly above average soundstage. As I listened to the Ola, I kept thinking that this IEM should be neutral, and then I would hit a track with vocals and I'd realize why it's not neutral. The mids are a bit emphasized, taking this IEM out of the neutral territory in my opinion. Unlike a wide swath of IEMs, the Ola is not V-shaped or aggressively vocal. There are some IEMs, such as the Blonde products, that have a quite sibilant vocal emphasis, and the Ola doesn't. Whether the Ola's sound signature is of interest is something for you to decide. We should conduct A-B comparisons to figure out how gear fits into the market. New IEMs hit the market every month and we need to be cautious about where we put our money. To that end, I compared the Ola against the Tin Hi-Fi T2 and the Moondrop Aria. Both of these IEMs are popular and should provide a good idea of where the Ola fits in. I've already pointed out the differences or similarities between the Ola and the Quarks, so keep that in mind as well. For these tests, I plugged each IEM into a passive AB switch that was plugged into my RME ADI2 DAC. I used the stock accessories. I listened to my test playlist on Amazon Music HD. And of course, I tried to volume match. The T2 has a vastly different bass response than the Ola. The T2 has a very noticeable bass roll-off compared to the Ola. The Ola sub-bass is more obvious and has longer reverberation. Mid-bass impact is similar between these IMs, but the T2 has greater separation between sub-bass and mid-bass. The mids are also quite different. The T2 and Ola both push vocals forward. However, the T2 has an emphasis in vocal sibilance. Mid-centric elements are clearer, more separated from each other on the T2. The treble is different as well. The T2 has a treble emphasis compared to the Ola. The T2 has more clarity in the treble region. Brass and horns display greater energy on the T2. The T2 has greater detail retrieval and slightly wider soundstage. The Aria's bass rendition is different from the Ola's. The Ola has a slight sub-bass roll-off while the Aria has a slight sub-bass emphasis. Mid-bass on the Aria is elevated while the Ola's is closer to neutral. The Ola has a bit more clarity in the bass region. The mids are also considerably different. The Ola has forward mids with vocals that stand two steps ahead of instruments. The Aria has recessed mids with vocals that stand one to two steps behind drums. There's more clarity in the mids region on the Ola. 
the treble is different. The Ola has fairly neutral treble, but a slight roll off in the upper treble. The Arya has a slight emphasis in the mid treble area and more noticeable roll off in the upper treble. However, both IEMs seem to present similar clarity and separation in this region. The Ola and Arya render about the same amount of details, but the Ola has slightly wider soundstage and overall clarity. You could, of course, compare the Ola against many, many other options. Blonde, Casey, and Ego are just three popular brands with various alternative products in the market, for example. The point is that you have plenty of options to choose from. There's no such thing as a universally perfect IEM or headphone. There's only that which works for you. My first experience with Tangem is, overall, a positive one. I'm not going to mince words about this. I think that Tangem impressed me, or really subverted my expectations. I am so weary of chi fi IEMs that every time I get a new set to review, I brace myself for aggressively V-shaped or sibilant sound signatures. There are so many IEMs that follow one of these characteristics that it's left a psychological scar on me. So when I got the Ola, I was prepared for the typical stuff. The marketing didn't help the situation, but I was pleasantly surprised to find that the Ola was the opposite of what I had expected. The Ola has a slight sub-bass roll-off but fairly neutral mid-bass. It has forward mids that focus on vocals but does not emphasize sibilance. It has close to neutral treble with a marginal upper treble roll-off. It's got average detail and slightly above average soundstage. Last year, when I reviewed the Moondrop Quarks, I was frankly over the moon for them. Finally, I had found a neutral IEM and one that cost no more than $12. I loved that product and simply wished for better build. Now, with the Ola, I get to experience something different, and it's different in a good way. This brings us to value. Yes, the Ola is value at $40. It has good build, decent though limited accessories, and a sound signature that is a refreshing change from what we've been given for many years, particularly in this price range. The Ola might not be your favorite IEM, and there is no guarantee you will like what it has to offer. If you enjoy detail and clarity, then you can do better than the Ola. If you prefer the Harman Target or Basie Signatures or more treble, then the Ola is probably going to be a bit of a disappointment. But if you think you'll enjoy a mostly neutral sound with a vocal emphasis that isn't harsh or piercing, then the Ola is a good option to consider.